What's up, everybody? This is Alex Christoforou, and I'm here with host of RT's Crosstalk, Peter Lavelle. And today we're going to be talking about what should be done with social media censorship. So, Peter, I'm, I'm going to lead off this, this segment uh, with an interview I saw last night of Nigel Farage. I think it was on Fox News. Um, that he right. went on, and he discussed the, the the very hot topic of censorship, which is kind of gripping the United States right now, especially with Alex Jones getting banned uh, pretty much by all the social media platforms, all at all within 12 hours. So there was a, a, a colluded effort to ban Alex Jones. And uh, Nigel Farage brought up a very interesting point, where he, he, he was making the argument that these social media companies, they've positioned themselves as platforms, and so they don't fall under any, any libel or legal issues because they're just act as, a, acting as independent platforms. But at the same time, they're now injecting editorial spin and they're in, injecting editorial uh, decision making on what should be deemed real news, what should be deemed fake news, what should be censored, what should not. And so Farage's argument was that these platforms, Facebook, Twitter, etc., they need to decide what they are. Are they independent platforms? in which case they're independent and free for anyone to post their thoughts and their comments and their opinions, or are they publishers and they do inject editorial control on the content, in which case it does open them up to, to libel suits, to legal claims against the way they're acting, because it, essentially they're just like CNN or the Wall Street Journal or any other publishing uh, company. And so they need to get off the fence, according to Farage, and I think I'm actually quoting him, they need to get off the fence and they need to decide, or the government has to decide for them, what are you, a platform or are you a publisher? What do you make of Farage's analysis of this situation? And what do you think should happen with, uh, with the social media censorship and these social media giants that wield so much control now? Well, obviously they are acting as a publisher because they're banning people, they're banning content. Um, when I put um, my uh, crosstalk programs on my uh, Facebook page, um, it's not so uh, uh, quickly, but eventually, days, maybe a week or two weeks, my program is deleted from my own page. I'm not informed of it, I'm not given a reason. Um, they make a, a editorial decision. Um, and so they, they certainly are a publisher. I mean, d d maybe just give an example for our viewers. Um, when telephones started becoming a part of everyday life, um, they, um, uh, the telephone companies were being sued because information um, uh, was being transferred from one phone call to another, one person to another. And it went to the courts and the courts said, well, I mean, they're just the pipe. OK, what people put in it and send through it is not the responsibility of the phone company. They are a platform. OK, so but if the telephone company starts saying, well, we're not going to let you talk to this person. And oh, by the way, we were listening and we heard about this. And we're going to use this information to make a business decision in the future. OK, that is a interference. And this is exactly what these social media companies do. They're not just there as a pipe. To, for information to move around from one point to another, okay? They have been very active. I mean, there, so many people um, ha have been affected by this, people that are being banned, um, people that uh, are questioned by uh, about what kind of content they put up. Now, of course, I think, you know, common sense is, is that, you know, uh, they say there's going to be no pornography. Okay, fine. There's other platforms for that, okay? And that's where it goes. You know, um, uh, display of gratuitous violence. Um, I agree that shouldn't be there. I think, but every, I think almost everybody agrees on that. Now, when it gets down to like abortion, then it gets a lot more complicated. Okay, um, um, what about the um, um, uh, um, disseminating information about a religious belief? or uh, pushing a, uh, a person that holds certain ph philosophical uh, beliefs like Jordan Peterson, for example, okay? Then it gets a little bit more complicated. So you have to say either it's, you're all in within certain parameters where I think the community basically agrees, pornography, violence, you know, that's off limits, okay? Um, but you, you can't mix it, okay? I think in an in a, in a, in a earlier video that we did is that 
you know, Facebook wants to, they want it to be a platform, but they want to have their own private security there. Well, that you can't have it both ways. You can't have both at the same time. Now, what's really interesting to me, I remember when Mark Zuckerberg testified in front of Congress, um, his performance was, um, well, ho-hum, okay? Um, but the performance of Congress was even worse, okay? Because obviously they didn't know, I mean, I guess it's a generational thing. I'm not going after old white men here. No, I'm not, okay? I'm just observing that some people were more clued in about how Facebook works because one senator said, well, how do you make money? <laughs> okay, I was like, I mean, and then Zuckerberg is sitting there doing the thing. God, okay, I'm going to get an easy ride with this guy. Oh, I wonder how much money I put in his pocket, too, okay? Anyway, um, no, I mean, they, what for me, that's, there, there's so many different layers here. It's a, it's a fascinating and terrifying story that we're seeing unfold in front of our eyes. Because, you know, it's interesting, Tucker Carlson, he's been running a series uh, on, on, on big tech, okay? And he has an experts that come in and to talk about that have written about it, that have been in the industry. And then he brings in politicians, and they're all a little wobbly about, well, should we regulate it? And, and they, because my sense is, is that they, there is hesitation to regulate it because these politicians, they want to use these social media platforms for their own political ends. And I think our viewers know that's going to be for pretty much one side, the left. Because it's the right and conservatives that are at the, on getting are on the short end of the stick when it comes to this. Just ask Alex Jones. Now I'm going to have to do it again. Repeat myself. Uh, I am not a big fan of Alex Jones. I am not. I'm not a big fan of Infowars. But how he's being treated, this it's almost as if it's a conspiracy within a 12-hour period. All of these platforms, including Amazon, goes after Alex Jones. I mean, did, was there a joint press conference that I missed? Okay. And, and, and what it is, is that this is just a, it's really shifting. This is what big tech is doing, the Silicon dictators, okay? They are going for the low-lying fruit, okay? Alex Jones annoys a lot of people, okay? He does, okay? He's got a huge fan base as well. But they're, they're focusing the attention on the content of one individual on a very uh, that has a very large presence instead of the conversation that you and I are having they don't want people talking about that it's and who are they going to go after next i mean this is the kabuki theater that's being played out you and i are asking the hard questions here you know because essentially i mean do you, should we treat these social media platforms as utilities now that's even dicey in itself because that's government control, okay? I, I don't want that. I don't want the government controlling all information flows. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. That's why, at least in the United States, we have a First Amendment where we negotiate what speech means under the law, not under the government, okay? And considering the you know the the shenanigans that's been going over on over at the DOJ. I mean, I don't want you know Rod Ros Rosenstein to be involved in making decisions about free speech on these platforms. That's a that's a that's a marriage that in hell. That is a marriage of authoritarianism. So we have to be very careful. What, what I guess for, for me, what, what's so disappointing is that all these heightened you know, words about a, a level playing field and everybody's got an opinion and everybody can play and everyone can join in because you don't have to pay for it. These guys, you know, they're they're just high-tech silicon um, uh, con artists. They're, they're interested in the bottom line. Bam, bam. That's get, what pisses yeah. me off the most. Yeah. I now, remember I mean, Facebook and Twitter. We're an open platform. We're an open communication system. They all came out with this really nice taglines and this nice sales don't, pitch. Don't do evil. You okay? Don't do, everything was open. Everything was about free speech. But at the end of the day, you're exactly right. And I think Farage is exactly right. These, these, these platforms, well, they were platforms maybe in the beginning, they've become publishers. And if they're publishers, that means they have to answer to the same First Amendment rules that CNN, that Breitbart, that the Wall Street Journal, that all these guys have to answer. Because the other day, and this, I want you to, to address this topic, I was watching Jimmy Dore talk about 
um, Alex Jones and Jimmy Dore is obviously progressive left. And he was coming out and defending Alex Jones. And their argument is the same argument that the conservative right is making. They're going to come after, once they're done with the conservative right, who else are they going to come after? Well, they're going to come after the, the libertarians. Progressives and libertarians. Exactly. They did. They, they already did after and, the Ron Paul and that's Institute my, of Peace exactly. and Prosperity. So go into that now. They've already okay. targeted Ron Paul Institute as well as antiwar.com. Okay. All right. All right. You know, uh, the Ron Paul Institute of uh, Peace and Prosperity is, is a uh, pristine and t absolutely respected institution. They are anti-war and they're for free markets. They, and they wear their stripes on their sleeves every single time. Good for I've interviewed Ron Paul. I checked it last night. It's uh, almost 200,000 hits. People love Ron Paul. Why? Because they trust him. Why? Because he tells the truth. Why? Because he calls strikes and balls. Okay. Um, and then Daniel McAdams, who who, who um, uh, uh, runs um, uh, um, the Institute for for Ron Paul, um, he got snarled into this. I thought it's no coincidence. He retweeted something. He yeah. retweeted something, and then he gets. Uh, um, uh, uh, I don't know. I, I think he's 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 um, been taken off for a certain amount of time. Yeah, I don't suspended. think he's been completely. Yeah. He's suspended. Okay, but I mean, again. This is this is the chilling effect here. I mean, the Ron Paul Institute of Peace and Prosperity. I, I, I adore watching their videos because they're like us. They just say it as they yeah. think it. Okay. Can, can, can I read they, you what what he was banned on the tweet? I ahead. found it. Let me read right. you what he was what what McAdams was was banned on for retweeting and what the original tweet was that ensnared all these all these three guys in this. So the tweet was. Um, I hope a MAGA guy eats your face. And, and that tweet was, was targeted, was sent to a guy, Jonathan Katz, who's a Soros guy. He works for an NGO sponsored by George Soros. And it was just basically banter between two journalists that were kind of going at it. That was the tweet that these guys got banned for. I and hope was... a MAGA guy eats your face. That's it. Okay. Okay. But if we use the standards that we have heard recently over the last few uh, news cycles, there is context for what was written. Yeah, there's, okay? context, there's, there's context, and he was, yeah, and he was referring, it was, it was kind of tug in cheek to say that MAGA people are like zombies. And that was the context. So all these MAGA guys, they have no, no accountability, they have no agency, they're just zombies. And so that was a tweet. Continue. Well, I, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I don't really participate much in the Twitter world, but what I do see, I mean, at a random moment, I see comments like that all of the time. That's why I find it really exhausting, okay? So Daniel McAdams is a person of e enormous um, uh, credibility, okay? And, this, and I just got a message from him a, a few minutes ago before we started here. And he's, he, I won't repeat it because it was a private message. See, I respect privacy, all right? <laughs> I respect privacy. Uh, it, that's what conservatives do, okay? Yeah. That's what we do. We respect privacy. Um, but see, going after Daniel, it, it's a chilling effect. So it's going to go going after other people. And it's really interesting, isn't it? It's this you have um, um, kind of, a, I would say, kind of the loopy right with Alex Jones. And then you have uh, Daniel McAdams, which is a really smart, well thought out libertarian. OK, right across the spectrum there. I don't think that's a coincidence, okay? And we'll see where it goes next. I mean, all these goofballs, uh, these liberals, I mean, uh, everything that they stood for about, ab about civil liberties, they have trashed in less than two yeah. years. It's astounding. It's astounding. And of course, somehow, Alex Jones is connected to the Russians. Okay, that's, that's the next step, okay? All right, so... I mean, th this is this collective lunacy uh, of the establishment left. And again, I appeal to libertarians and progressives like Jimmy Dore. And, and, and I talk to Jimmy Dore. Let's embrace each other. It's the, this, it, the, this radical leftism is what's destroying everything. Everything it touches, it destroys, okay? And, there's, and because of uh, news outlets like... Uh, uh, MSHIV, oh, excuse me, MS, uh, NBC, um, and, and, and CNN, they're just cheering along the destruction of freedom of speech. It's, how dare you yeah. attack the FBI and the DOJ? Oh my God, that's what you're supposed to do! That's what you're supposed to do as journalists! Yep. Good Go, God. Going on that Russian thing, here's, I, I was on Drudge, 
Here's a trending story on Drudge, front page of Drudge. It's taken from InfoWars, and I'm going to read you the title just to show our viewers that you've tapped into it, the Blame Russia thing on InfoWars. Here's the title. Democrats blame Russians for Ohio loss. Turn on the Green Party. They're blaming Russia for their loss and saying the Green Party are agents of the Ruskies. <laughs> the Green Party. Because Jill Stein, I was at the same dinner. Why don't I get credit? I was at that damn dinner too. I was two tables back. Why didn't they have a wider frame? I would have been there wearing my bow tie. I would have. I would have been seen. I don't get credit. You know, again, you know, more sense. <laughs> <laughs> they should be coming after you, Peter. <laughs> Don't go after Peter, guys. No, hey, no, no, no. I, I've, always, I've been waiting for a moment like this. Well, why don't they come after me? Because I'm dead for them. I'm already dead. Uh, they've already written my obituary. Okay. Oh, I, people, my viewers will get a kick out of this. About two weeks ago, ten days ago, producer from uh, Brian Stelter's um, uh, Reliable Sources, I, I guess that he got that from Orwell because it's on CNN, yeah. and they wanted me to uh, come on his program and I my first reaction was I don't do fake news and then I thought about it for a couple minutes and I said well I might reconsider if you get a, a, a higher intelligence a higher IQ presenter I might reconsider okay <laughs> I didn't get a reaction <laughs> I, I, I think it would be great to see you on that show but on the flip side you know it's such no. a trap okay you know, I mean, you know, but, see, but see this is no see this is this is what happens it's almost kind of a multiculturalism of ideology, okay? It's an ideologies, they, they try to commingle. See, I am tolerant, but they're not. So they want me to play into their trap, and their gross intolerance, all they want to do is, it, it, it just, it wants the, what they want is a drive-by shooting, okay? I do a half an hour program. That segment that they're thinking about is going to be, two minutes max and what i do is I, I i lift up my head and then there they go they start firing okay yeah. they're not interested in what i have to say they're interested in taking down a target exactly okay exactly. and that's why that's why i always plug for tucker carlson at least at least 50 percent of the people that come on his program disagree with him and it gives them time and it gives them a hard time if they don't know their stuff okay yeah. so you know that's what and CNN doesn't do that. MSNBC, I mean, it, I mean that place is just a, that is a, a sect. I mean, yeah. that's an ideologically possessed sect. There, it's scary. Okay, but I mean, kind of go, going full circle here. Um, the great hope of of uh, these tech companies, they're showing their real ugly face. They're brutal. Um, they're ideologically possessed, and um, they. They may think that they're being uh, protective of their bottom line, but they're destroying their bottom line because if it's people like us don't want to go there, they're not going to make any money. They're not going to sell anything. Uh, so um, th w who knows what future historians will say about this age? Because uh, I think it's a tipping point. It's a, right. the, the needle. The needle is being moved. Okay, and it's not good for freedom of speech. Yeah, I think we hit a, a, a major tipping point, and and I want you to wrap it up for our viewers now, Peter. Do you think these companies should be broken up? Do you think they should be categorized as publishing companies and not platforms? Do you think the U.S. government should get involved? What do you think is the solution here? Or do you think uh, there is I, no solution? I think there's. I think there should be competition in the in, in, on the in the marketplace. I think they should be broken up. Okay, look. I mean, look, look what happened to AT and T. Okay, they broke it up. And then, then they had the, the little bells. They had they had the Southern Bell, Northern Bell, Western Bell, Tech Bell, and they compete. Microsoft, they compete, okay? Microsoft, Microsoft. Okay. Um, and uh, but if you look at Facebook and you look at Google, you know these numbers: uh, eighty plus in in, in uh, revenue ad, ads for revenue. Okay. I mean, they, this is a cast, uh, classic case of monopoly. Break it up into different different components. And have a have a competition, and uh, and then you, you'll have better service, and you'll and you'll be more accountable to your um, uh, viewers and users. Okay, I think it's very simple. I don't want the government to take it over because they have the kill switch. Boom, we're all in the dark. Yeah. No way. No way. That is terrifying for me because then they can disappear anything they want, and they can wipe the history. Okay, I don't governments and algorithms bad, very bad. Don't let that happen. 
Yeah, but, the Democrats are already circulating. This was leaked yep, to Axios. Yeah, I saw that. I saw yeah, that. they're circulating a, a proposal. <laughs> I guess they're calling it now a proposal, but God knows, God forbid it turns into law. They're circulating a proposal that actually gives them the right to, to go into these social media companies. And, and in order to prevent Russian interference, yeah, right? Yeah, they're going to they're, they're this... enforce that kill switch in order to okay, prevent but, Russian interference. But, but the, moving forward, um, do we want do we want a, a, a Republican and then a Democrat and a Republican and a Democrat, Democrat? Do we want these administrations? You know, they're going to have the keys. You know, they're going to have the keys to it all. You want to give, I, I, I don't want to give it to them, okay? Particularly in the atmosphere we have right now. If, if we, let's say we, we do, uh, give government control over these uh, um, social media platforms. What do you, if, if a Democrat gets voted in in 2020 and they have the keys, what do you think they're gonna do? These people are, are ideologically possessed. They're nuts, okay? And, and and look, I mean, just as an aside, because only Fox News wants to cover it, that you know this the RussiaGate story and the involvement of uh, uh, the FBI. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bruce Orr. Bruce I mean, Orr. man, he was just palsy palsy with with uh, Christopher Steele. Okay, he was told not to meet with him. Everybody said we have no relationship, and they kept meeting anyway. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they break their own rules. Do you want to give the, these kind of people the keys to all social media platforms? That's insanity. Break up these things. Make it competitive. Make it responsible. Okay? You know, that is a way forward. It'll, it'll create a better product. Okay? Yeah. Make sure that everybody gets on and stop. I mean, and maybe, maybe there can be a, um, a, a left book and a right book and let people decide what book they want to be in. Okay? Peter. WhatsApp can be its own company. Instagram can be its own company. Facebook can be its own company. They don't all have to fall under uh, under Facebook. As I forget Facebook bought WhatsApp and Instagram because it was eating into Facebook's user uh, time spent and it was eating into their advertising market, photos and messaging. There, right there, you have three companies competing for, for, for the well-being of everyone. Okay. Really, I, I, I really worry that we're going to have this. We're going to have a, the a, an ice age ahead of us if it continues the way we are in in, 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 in the information sphere. Yeah. Okay, this is a, it, those that don't take this seriously. You know, you have to be very careful because it's possible the conversations like us, what we're doing with Jimmy Dore, uh, Mark Dice, can disappear, disappear and and disappear to the point where. I mean, we're really, really gone. I mean, just wiped away as if it never happened. I mean, at least in the past, you could have say, you know, I, I, you know, I lived in Poland, and people would save newspapers. You know, I mean, the stacks, and because you know, they, 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 they were, there was a record. They had a record of what happened because the communist government kept changing the story. Okay, we don't have that, that, um, that uh, ability anymore. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is this is like it really is. As I put it on Facebook this morning, you know, 1984 was a novel. It wasn't written to be a uh, a user's manual. <laughs> they're they're making Alex Jones disappear. They're doing it right now in front of yeah. our eyes. In front it's of right. our eyes, they're making just him disappear. Just like there's this, this famous picture of Stalin with his henchmen, and through uh, three or four years during the the purges. Each one was wiped away, wiped away, and published in Pravda in his Destia as if it was true. Okay, yeah. and this is exactly what they're going to be able to do. Poof. We're, we're you moving never into, existed. Yeah, you we're never moving existed. into a dark place, and we're moving very fast, very fast. Very fast. Towards, yeah, very fast. On that pessimistic note, but there's always hope, and hopefully uh, this does get sorted out. Uh, because at the end of the day, we do have some very powerful and very uh, useful and interesting technology uh, platforms and that really do make a difference and really do help society. And it's unfortunate that they've been hijacked and they've been uh, utilized in these ways. Um, it's, it's stunning to see what's happening right before our eyes, especially with Alex Jones. Yeah, because um, we're, in, we're entering, I've been foreseeing it, the age of disbelief and anger. Yeah. Social media platforms, step up and be responsible or you'll lose too. Or you'll lose too. On that note, Peter Lavelle, host of RT's Crosstalk, thank you very much. 
Guys, if you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below and click on that notifications bell to get notifications every time we push out a video. And visit the Duran shop, pick up a t-shirt, help support the Duran. Your contributions always help because you never know when they're gonna come after us. <laughs> Just kidding, don't come after us. <laughs> Peter Lavelle, host of RT's Crosstalk. Thank you very much, guys. Until next time, take care.